All right, we are back with the rest of, well, the next continuation, I should say, of our 10.2 notes for AP Statistics. Today we're going to be talking about confidence intervals for differences between two means. So the slide that you see in front of you is lots of different formulas that we use for differences. The first two formulas were standard deviation for differences of proportions. Now you'll notice that some have p's and some have p hats. There is a reason for such a thing. Okay, One is when you know the population proportion, which is when there's no hat. The second one, when we call it standard error, is when we don't know the population proportion, so we use the statistic from the sample. The first one is used in sampling distribution. The second one is used when we are doing confidence intervals. Okay, It's the same thing down here. Standard deviation for difference of means. This guy right here uses sigma. That's population standard deviation. We use that for sampling distribution. But when it comes to confidence intervals, we do not know that. So we have to use S, our sample standard deviation. So that's our standard error. So our confidence interval. So when you're doing your four-step process for your confidence interval, and it's like the plan part, this is what you're going to use, a two-sample T interval for the difference between two means. So when the um, normal, random, and independent conditions are met, an approximate level C confidence interval for the difference of two sample means is given by this formula right here. T star is our critical value for confidence level for the T distribution with degrees of freedom. Now, you might be wondering, how do I find degrees of freedom? When it was just one mean, we would do our sample size minus one. That was our degrees of freedom. But now there are two sample sizes, and they might not be the same number. So there are two different ways that you can calculate degrees of freedom. Okay? If you want to know the big nasty formula for how it's done, you can read in your textbook on page 637. It's nice and ugly. There are two ways. One way is to use your table. Okay? That's going to be a more conservative method by using the table B. Now your other option, well, I should say more about that. If you're using your table B, you're going to use the smaller of your two degrees of freedom. Sorry about that, I had to pause. So let me just recap a bit. So to find degrees of freedom for a two sample, there are two options, table B or technology. If you're using the table, you're going to use the smaller of your sample size is minus one. This will give you a wider range when you do your confidence interval. If you choose to use technology, this will give you a narrower range, even though it's still the same confidence level. It's just your degrees of freedom are changed, so that changes your um, T star value. Now how you do that, here are your steps in your calculator. You go to stat, go to test, choose option zero, and that gives us the thing for intervals. Now at the op bottom they will ask you about if you want to use pooled. We will never use pooled when it comes to confidence intervals. So, here's what this looks like on your notes. Uh, we go into a little bit more detail about our conditions. Random. We know that both of them are produced by random samples or it's a randomized experiment. So there's a difference. It could be an observational study where they do sampling or it could be a randomized experiment. Either one works. Normal if either both populations are normal or both groups are larger than 30. And remember, if they are not, you're going to have to graph your data and look at it to see what it looks like, looking for skew and outliers. Independent, you have to talk about how the samples as well as the groups and also the individuals were all independent. And then if you're sampling without replacement, you check your 10% condition for both samples. Okay, so that's just going to be for sampling. You're not going to need that for experiments, I don't think. So this is what we had from the slide. Less conservative for my technology option. And then we have more conservative for our table option. Okay. Never choose pooled from the calculator. It may give you a decimal, but that's okay.
So let's go through our first example together. Researchers are interested in determining the effectiveness of a new diet for individuals with heart disease. 200, that seems important, heart disease patients are selected and randomly assigned to the new diet or the current diet used in the treatment of heart disease. So that tells me this is going to be an experiment. 100 of the patients that were on the new diet lost an average of 9.3 pounds with a standard deviation of 4.7 pounds. The 100 patients that were continuing with their current prescribed diet lost an average of 7.4 pounds with a standard deviation of 4 pounds. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the difference in mean weight loss for the two diets. Okay, four step process. Here we go. Step one, state. When you are going through the state for a confidence interval, there are three things you need to say. That you're estimating an interval at whatever confidence level. You need to, well actually, you need to say that you're estimating. You need to say the level. And then you need to define the parameters that you're using. Um, I think I'm going to use subscripts that have to do with the problem. So that way I am not confused about what mu sub 1 and mu sub 2 are it's going to be a lot clearer to me. So, what do we want to do? We want to estimate we want to estimate the difference of the mean. So let's say mu sub n I'll use n for the new diet minus mu sub o so I'll say that's for their old diet or their current prescribed, so I'll just call it old, that's just what I'm choosing, at a 95% confidence level where, and now I need to define my parameters, mu sub n is the mean weight loss on the new diet, and I'm going to add in pounds just so I'm aware of what units I'm using, and mu sub O is going to be the mean weight loss on, or I should say with their current, aka their old diet, again, in pounds. So I'm estimating. We estimate with confidence intervals. We test with significance tests. So we say estimate with confidence intervals. We're estimating the difference in the true means at this level with these parameters. So now we plan. Plan, we have to go through our conditions after we say what we're going to use. So, we'll use a two sample T interval for the difference in our parameters. if our conditions are met. So now we go through our conditions. Condition number one, check if it's random. So we said, we saw up here that it was randomly assigned. So because it's randomly assigned, we know it's been random. Randomly assigned to new diet or their current diet. Next comes normal. So we need to check out 
Did it say anything about it being normally distributed for the population? No, it did not. So we need to check the sample sizes. One sample size, or one group of the experiment was 100. The other group of the experiment was also 100. So central limit theorem kicks in. So both samples are greater than or equal to 30. So I can say the central limit theorem applies. And I know that it's going to be an approximately normal distribution. Next is independent. So I need to talk about how it's independent amongst the groups and then also amongst the individuals. So I can say that the amount of weight loss of one subject should have no impact on another's loss and then also the same thing for the groups right one group is independent of the other I don't need to check my 10% condition because it's an experiment so we've got our state we've got our plan now we get to do some math okay so, some things that we know from this problem. We were given the means and the standard deviations. Actually, I'm using the wrong notation. Am I not? They didn't technically give me population mean. That's what I'm trying to estimate. I'm actually going to use my sample stuff. So it's my sample mean for n and my sample standard deviation for n, my sample mean for the old one, my sample standard deviation for the old one. So where do I get those numbers? I get those from the problem. So I've got 9.3 for the new diet with a standard deviation of 4.7. We've got 7.4 with a standard deviation of 4. So some information that we know. So let's go ahead and start filling things in to our formula. So our formula from your previous page of your notes is going to be x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2 plus or minus your t star times your standard error s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2 let's go ahead and substitute in what we know so we're using n for 1 and o for 2 so we've got 9.3 minus 7.4 plus or minus my t star which I'll find here in a second big square root 4.7 squared over both of our sample sizes for the groups were 100 and 4 squared over 100 okay so that looks pretty good we need to find our t and the way we find our t is to know our degrees of freedom so Degrees of freedom, like we said, can be done one of two ways. You can either do it conservatively, or you could do it from the calculator. So our conservative degrees of freedom is going to be 100 minus 1, which is 99. Okay. My technology way of doing degrees of freedom is going to come from the calculator. And I'm going to show you that here in the next video.